Hi, Stephen Caleb from Brownells here, bringing you another episode of Smithbusters. Today, Caleb, what is the theme we got going? Well, uh, I just got to say that paint is for houses, not for your guns. Ooh, strong words indeed. Strong words. You know how much I hate painted guns, Steve. Yeah, I do, especially wolf gray. Look, I got a lot of painted guns. I got a lot of guns painted in wolf gray. All right, so the uh, anti-painters out there, they're, I mean, what, what, what's going on, Steve? Paint haters, is that what you're saying? Paint haters, anti-painters. Um, I, I don't know how, I, a lot okay. of things, but okay. you, you, you get the gist there. I was going to say something else, and I was like, that's not appropriate for camera, so it, let's, uh, let's, let's just keep going. Well, when I first heard about coating guns, um, boy, I was skeptical because I was, you know, strictly bluing and parkerizing. That was me. Yeah. And uh, this started like back in the 90s in kind of a big way, I think. You could get an actual, like a 1911 or something that had been coated mm -hmm. rather than blued. Right. And they seemed to work. <laughs> yeah, they, they seemed to work pretty well if done correctly. Right. There's a That's lot of the ways thing. out there to paint a gun that will uh, impede its function or f and fitment of parts. And I think that's what really turns a lot of people off to it, uh, the, the haters. That you know. and the fact that your holster will grind off a lot of paint finishes. Yeah, but I mean, your holster will take off the bluing as well. Sure. So what, I mean, what difference does it make? Uh, there's nothing that's, you know, holster wear proof, 100%. So, yeah. I mean, there are coatings out there that do a pretty good job now, like, you know, Cerakote and gun coat and stuff, but... I mean, it's not a... In no. fact, uh, some production guns are made with very little else but a coating of some kind. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of factory guns now that come with a coating. Like, again, Cerakote, gun coat. Um, what are the others? Uh, they have Duracoat. Duracoat's a good one. Yep. yep. Um, rattle can. Rattle Maybe can. not from the factory, but... Right. Alumahide 2, great stuff. Alumahide 2 is phenomenal. So... Whenever I kind of try to explain to people the difference between Alumahide 2 and like Rattle Can, uh, first of all, Alumahide 2 is like a bajillion times more, dur more durable. Uh, bajillion yeah. is the technical term there. Okay. Um, that's I'm with, with you. With a B. Uh, anyways. And then you have, you know, your Rattle Can, which if you're trying to go for like that worn look uh, without using your gun a lot, Rattle Can's great. It'll, oh, it'll wow. start wearing off pretty quickly. Like the Boba Fett look? His his blaster's pretty beat up. His blaster is pretty. His armor's beat up. You yeah. Know? Um, yeah. So if you're gonna do like a, a Boba Fett paint job, it's got to be beat up from the go. Yeah. To, to be right. But anywho, um, you made me lose my train of thought, Steve. Well, in the meantime, I'd like to say, you know, when the, when they first started doing this in the industry, it would be in the fine print that it was coated or something. And now, if it's Cerakoted or anything like that, it's right out there in front. You know, oh, you yeah. want this Cerakote. Yeah, it's like, a, now it's a selling point. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, I mean, that, that should say enough as is, but uh, oh, I was talking about the difference between Alumahide and Rattle Can, Steve. That's what oh, I was. Oh, you mean, well, Alumahide is a Rattle Can, but it, it's... It is technically a Rattle Can. It's, yeah. it's in there. You got to shake it up uh, before you spray it on. But no, the, the big thing with that is that it goes on a lot thinner than your traditional Rattle Cans. Um, I don't know who painted this gun. I don't know what they painted it with, but it was a rattle can of some sort. And they put it on pretty thick, cause, probably because that's how it came out the can. Um, Alumahide 2 comes out way thinner, but is way more durable. And that's really the... Actually, the thinness is kind of an attribute. The more built up it is, it seems like the more it chips off corners and things like that. It really does. If you just go on with a thin coat, it seems to do way better. Yeah. I'm a big gun coat fan, and I like to get the liquid stuff like this and spray it through a little airbrush because I'm mostly doing handguns and it works phenomenal. You know, you get a little Pace airbrush and yeah. it worked great. I, uh, I did an AK recently in gun coat through your airbrush actually. Yeah. Uh, if you would have known it was an AK, you might not have lent it to me. But, uh, <laughs> just kidding, no. Uh, but yeah, and that gun came out great. Mm -hmm. like it, it, and it's an AK, it's, uh, it's being beat up quite a bit. But I mean, if you didn't know better, you would think it was blued from a distance. I just did a matte black. Right, and coat. painting your gun allows you to get really creative, not only with colors, but with patterns, with yes. camouflage, with uh, con contrasting, you know, you can have some black controls, some flat dark earth here or whatever, gray. Yep, 
And uh, speaking of kind of, you know, making it your own and customizing, so the, the TV show Build Box. Yeah, I've heard uh, of that. Yeah, so I was actually a judge on one of those episodes. But anyways, that's besides the point. Every episode of that gun, and it's totally the point, every episode of, of that show has painting on a gun. Uh, that's a, like a huge part of it. Yeah. If you don't paint your gun, you're probably not going to win the competition. Um, so it, it was, it's cool. And uh, Brownells has been sending instructors to the gunsmith schools for years now to show you how to do alternative finishes, which is basically a coating, a paint of some kind. Yep, I've assisted in several of those classes at gunsmithing schools. Right. Um, uh, Murray State College, Pennsylvania right. Gunsmith School or two that I've been to. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's a really cool thing. Speaking of which, we, so we do that for gunsmithing schools, but um, so obviously, you know, we're pretty well versed in how to, how to paint your gun. Yeah. If you think we should do some kind of a online tutorial on that, I mean, now's the chance to speak up. We may, we may get in on that action. Yeah, yeah. And when you select your coating, you got to remember, uh, you don't have to bake it on. There are air dried coatings and there are bake on coatings. Yeah. I like gun coat, it's a bake on because I'm done with it right away. But Alumahide 2 cures about a week. It's just as tough as gun coat, if not tougher. So if you're not in a big hurry, you know, put the gun back together and you don't have an oven, you're not going to use the one in the kitchen because it's going to smell like you're baking paint. Yeah. Um, you know, you can go with a gun coat or a Dura coat or mm -hmm. an air cured Cerakote. Yep, air cured Cerakote, and you can actually speed cure Alumahide 2 in an oven as well yeah. if you don't have all that time to wait. Uh, but, I mean, I really wouldn't do it in your, your kitchen oven because nope. you're going nope. to have to let it air out for a long time. Your wife and or girlfriend is going to hate you for it. Yeah, so. your significant other. Your signif there, there you go. That way I don't have to say and or and make it right. weird. Um, yeah, so. It's already gotten weird enough. There's a lot of options out there. Point is... Paint is also for guns, not just houses. And uh, feel free to to paint your gun. This is this is functional art in the form of a firearm. That's right. That sounded beautiful. That's right, man. I'll, I'll wipe away a tear. Do it. Um, we get you a handkerchief. If you have experience coating your guns, painting your guns, let us know in the comments. We'd like to hear from you. If you're thinking about it and have any questions, let us know or call us up on the tech line. We'll be glad to help you out. In the meantime, hit that like and subscribe button, and we'll see you next time when we bring you another episode of Smithbusters.